Okay, so today we're going to move into the new phase of using Visual Studio. So let's do this. Go ahead and open up your, your web browser. Go to any web browser you would like. And let's go to visualstudio.com. So Visual Studio is software that has been around for probably around 20 years at least. It's been around since the 90s, some point in the 90s. And it's software that lets you create software, basically. Uh, Best-in-class tools for any developer, they claim. So it's a way for you to uh, create apps. And traditionally, for the last 20 years, or 19 out of the last 20 years, it's been software to create apps for Windows. So software to create software for Windows. You would make a calculator app, or you would make um, you know, a recipe app, or you would make a social network, or whatever. You would make apps that would go on uh, and be installed in, on, on computers, Windows computers. You would go to the software store. Anyone remember going to CompUSA back in the day and buying stuff off the shelf? Uh, well, that was software you would get there as well. And as I said before, well, uh, things change, and mobile is very popular nowadays. Mobile devices, uh, they don't seem to be a fad. It seems that mobile devices are here to stay. So Microsoft said, well, we need to get in on that, on that party, so we will um, create a version of Visual Studio that really focuses on creating apps for devices. Now, I see, as I look through the class, some of you have some experience with Visual Studio code. Uh, that's not the same as what we're going to use here. And basically, if you were using visual code or brackets, I would really say you're not going to use it anymore in the class because Visual Studio, the main Visual Studio software, has a very powerful code editor. And it's the main thing that we're going to use to transfer our web app into a real device. You're not going to be able to use brackets for that since it's a web-based project maker. You're not going to be able to use brackets, visual code, notepad++. So we're sort of going to graduate away from those things. Question? Does it work on Mac? It works on Mac also because I've, I've come here on a Windows computer. It detects I'm on Windows, so it shows me the Windows download. But if I go there on a Mac, it'll detect I'm, a Mac, I'm on a Mac, and it'll give you the Mac download. So Visual Studio is what's going to basically convert our web projects into um, compiled versions to go on real devices. And it's free because Visual Studio for a long time was pretty expensive. I don't know how much, but easily hundreds of dollars, it's, if not thousands of dollars. It was an enterprise tool. Uh, meaning Captain Kirk would use it. No, I mean, it, would, it means that it would be used by big companies that wanted to create apps for their corporations or uh, official app developers that wanted to make apps uh, for, for sale. But uh, now they've got versions uh, for the community, uh, which, is, which is free. So as, if I kind of browse around a little bit... Um, you know, they're going to tell you all about, try our editor, here's what's great about it, uh, go learn this and that, and uh, go check out our App Center, etc. So there's a lot of documentation to read. And in the class, we have like the big goal of we're creating an app, and I'm showing you the pieces of the puzzle, and you can take those pieces and make a different puzzle. But there's always going to be something new to learn, and I recommend that you spend time at visualstudio.com reading the documentation here, too. Um, and this is on the syllabus. I put various useful links on the syllabus, and I'm going to give you more links as well. Uh, but you're going to spend time reading the documentation here to do something that we might not have done in class. You want to go beyond what we've done in class? The documentation will be here. So we don't need to click download or anything. This, this is already set up on our computer. You're going to need to do this on your own computer at home if you wish to do this stuff at home. Uh, I, again, I've got a handout that will give you step by step exactly what to do. I'm just going to show you an overview in general, then give you the handouts. But if you were going to do this at home, you would go to it, visualstudio.com at home, and download the community version here. You don't want enterprise or professional because those are not free. The free one is community. 
again, you don't have to click on this, but I'm just curious what does it look like. It might even just start to download right away. Survey, no thanks. Yeah, it's going to download. So I'm, don't click to download anything. I'm just showing you at home. You would go through here. Uh, you would start to download. This download is going to be somewhere between 2 and 22 gigabytes, uh, depending on what you choose to install or not install. And again, on the handout, when I show you that, I'll explain why is it so small or so big. We'll, we'll get to that. But what I want to show is that we've got various documentation. Well, how do I build my first app? There's going to be the documentation, etc. And uh, on visualstudio.com, there's going to be the support screen where I can go read all about how does it work, what more do I do, how do I fully set it up. So we'll explore these things in time. Um, I want to start using this right away. Visual Studio community is already installed on these computers. So uh, you can come back to visualstudio.com later. I'm going to close that. Let's actually launch the software. It's either on your desktop or your start menu. So go ahead and start Visual Studio 2017 there from your start menu or desktop. It's going to start up. Now the one catch to use this for free is that you need to sign in with a free Microsoft account, which is Hotmail or Outlook or anything like that. So when you start up your software, it may pop up to ask you to sign in. You may be able to cancel it or skip it for the moment, but uh, after 30 days, it will then ask you to, uh, to sign in. So if it's asking you to do so right now, you can do so. Uh, there it is right there. So. The, this was installed um, at, the, uh, at the beginning of the semester, which has been more than 30 days, so that's why it's saying my trial has ended. But again, this is not a trial where you're going to have to pay for anything. The only thing is that you're going to just need to sign in with a Microsoft account. Uh, so for us, in order for us to use the software in the class, you need to do that. You, there's no way past this, really. There's just exit. So how many of you currently have any kind of Microsoft account? Hotmail, Outlook, etc. So it seems like more than half the class. Good. So what you want to do then is click Sign In. Go ahead and sign in. If you don't have a Microsoft account, then you have to take a moment to uh, sign up for one. So that's our first task there. Either Sign In or Sign Up. So I'm going to pause right there. We don't get this. Does it mean that's still free? It's always free, even. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Even if you don't get it, it's always free. If it doesn't pop up for you, um, okay, that's fine. Just wait a moment. It'll probably pop up in just a moment because it is past the 30 days. One way to make sure it is going to ask you to sign in on the top right corner. Even if this doesn't pop up, I would still click sign in on the top right corner and then go ahead and sign in. So if you came in a little bit late, we're just going to start using Visual Studio. At the moment, I would recommend to use Visual Studio on our computers, not your computer yet, because you need to download it. It's like uh, uh, 2 to 20 gigabytes. I don't want you to fall behind. I want us to all be using my, our computers here for the moment. Then you'll be able to set this up on your own computer. You go ahead and sign up or sign in to your Microsoft account there. Thank you. 
So when you do this at home, on your own computer, there's going to be various options to turn on. And I'll have those all explained on a handout. We don't get the pop-up of those options because I've already set them up on these computers. These computers are already all set up, ready for us to go. Uh, but when I give you the handout, you'll be able to do this at home. And I recommend, of course, you practice this outside of class. Uh, so mine is, uh, I've signed in on mine. It recognizes me, so OK. Um, on, this, um, on this welcome sort of screen, it's going to say, here's recent projects you've been working on. <clears throat> we'll be able to open uh, projects and such. You get news that's coming up here. So you can check out that stuff on your own. There'll be more documentation. You can read even more uh, stuff for you to check out. Build your first app in five minutes, or maximize your productivity with these tips and tricks. You can check those out on your own. We're going to create a quick test project, just to make sure we're all on the same page. We're all getting the basic understanding of the software. Let's go up to the File menu, New Project. So if you're used to any web development, like if you're using brackets or visual code, you know that you've got a project folder where everything exists and you work inside of that. And Notepad++ is a little bit more of a basic editor, so it doesn't exactly have that, uh, although you can use it like a, editing a project folder. Visual Studio, because it's going to work even more complexly in terms of now you're going to have a project that can be deployed to an Android device, an iPhone device, a Windows device, a Blackberry device. You're going to have a project folder that has all of the pieces of your project. So let's go here, File New Project. Uh, we, we can use Visual Studio to create a variety of types of projects, but I've got it set up for mobile projects. Question. Um, the reception in the building is usually really bad. You're going to need that code, so maybe step out a moment and see if the reception comes in. And the annoying thing about it is, yeah, this doesn't let you proceed without logging in. Sorry about that. So just see if you can get that code and then continue. So here, then, we've got mobile app project. Using JavaScript, we can create a mobile app project. There's various templates that are going to exist. And I've only got it set up for the one we care about in this class. But we would have other templates, such as making games, um, making advanced games, making um, Java-based projects, which, of course, Java is different than JavaScript. But I've got it here for mobile apps with JavaScript, which is what we've been working with so far, JavaScript. And it's going to use Cordova. So we're going to use even more the concept of what Cordova is as, as the class goes on. Name, location, solution name. Um, this is going to be the name of your app. And right now, let's just call this uh, test01. This is going to be the name of your app. The name of your app, the, the, uh, right below the icon. All of this can be changed, of course. If I want to call it something real later, I can. Uh, but this is going to uh, give you the, the name on the icon. And this is going to be saying, this is going to save over to your documents folder. You don't have to save this to your flash drive. This project is just a complete test project. We're not going to keep it. Uh, so don't worry about saving it any place like on your flash drive. But note that this is going to get saved into the Documents folder of the, your particular computer. So OK, that's fine. Just um, at this point, then click OK. Oh, I forgot to mention this. Um, a blank project that uses Apache Cordova to help you build an app that targets Android, iOS, and the Windows Universal Platform. So this template project here is going to be able to target all of those major platforms. I'm just clicking OK. It's going to think for a moment. It's going to put together a variety of supporting files. And then we're going to get on the right side in a moment. 
this panel here, Solution Explorer, this will be like our folder tree. This will show us all of the various files and folders that this project is made out of. So I'm just waiting a moment for it to start up. And I'll have this on the handout, but this is again, let me touch on it right now. The very first time you set this up per day, it's usually the slowest because it has to get all of these pieces uh, ready for you. Uh, so when you come into the room, one of the first things we're going to do, and I'll have this on the handout, is you need to set up your environment uh, for the first time, even before I start to lecture, so that it's all ready to go by the time I'm ready to lecture. But again, I'll, I'll uh, give you the handout and explain it when we get to that. Let me see, what does mine say? Creating project, project creation successful. So then there's a little kind of welcome screen here. You're going to use Apache Cordova to create apps for all devices. Uh, some some uh, more documentation here, adding extra features, publishing it to an app store. What we've got here, completely for free, with Visual Studio um, Community 2017, is a way to create real apps for all the platforms from beginning to end. So we're going to take what we've worked with previously, the CBDB project, and basically import it into this shell. And behind the scenes, this shell will then be able to be compiled or deployed to devices. We don't have any devices plugged in at the moment, but we have simulators. See at the top here. Um, we've got a project in debug mode set to Android. We're going to simulate it on an LG G5. Click that little uh, green simulate button and wait a moment. The web browser will pop up, Google Chrome will pop up, and it'll simulate an Android LG G5. Go ahead and click that green run button. It's going to think about it for a moment, <coughs> compile it, process it, and then get to the simulator in a moment. here is, hey, that looks like a web browser, that looks like a website, that looks like Google Chrome. It is. It is the web browser. Uh, it's Google Chrome. Google Chrome comes from the Google company, and Android comes from the Google company. So they're actually integrated in a sense that you can use the Google Chrome web browser to pretend to be a mobile device. If you have an eagle eye, you might notice here that the web address is localhost port 4400 slash index. Similar-ish to if you were using brackets or um, visual code in that it, uh, it creates like a virtual server and then it runs your project. Uh, so no, not super important that you know that or notice it, but this project has loaded up here and then this is Apache Cordova device ready. So I've got my web browser and I've kind of like um, you know, I've resized my screen a little bit to be tall and thin, just like a mobile device like that. And if I'm seeing the Apache Cordova mascot, this little cube robot guy, I'm sure it has an official name, 
if we're seeing that, that's showing, yeah, our app is running on a device, on a simulator. So we will still be able to test our projects in a web browser simulator. And of course, we'll be able to test on a real device, um, a variety of type of Android devices. Uh, we'll still be able to um, F12 to open up the developers console to kind of see some output here and remember in Google Chrome we will be able to turn on the device toolbar this icon right here so that it further sort of behaves like one of these devices we're not going to be able to use if you want to use the simulator, we're not going to be able to use Firefox anymore. Uh, you're not going to be able to open up your index file in Firefox or Safari or whatever anymore. We're going to use Google Chrome because we're going to be targeting Android devices. Android comes from Google. Google Chrome comes from Google. Firefox doesn't. It's its own thing. I'm going to close the browser, come back to Visual Studio. We're going to have an output panel that is going to give us perhaps compiler errors and such. Oh, you missed a semicolon, etc. So now we're going to have a more powerful system to uh, determine the errors that our app might produce. And we have a full debugger here where we can set breakpoints and all of that fun stuff. If you don't know what that means, we'll get to it. But let's look over here in the Solution Explorer. There's a bunch of folders, and I'll have a handout that explains all of these things. There's a folder called www. If you open the www folder, what do you see in there? A website, index.html, a JavaScript folder, a CSS folder, an images folder. That's a website. If you double click index.html, it opens up in the main editor, and hey, that's HTML. There's various tags that we haven't talked about, which we will. And if we kind of look around, line uh, 22 seems to say that's the message that appeared when it said device is ready. I want to change the startup message from device is ready to say ready to rock. How do you think you might do that? Just change it. It's HTML. So if we go in here and say, change it to something like ready to rock, that message that after we simulate it again in a moment um, will now say this, ready to rock. And this, this editor here it is uh, more advanced than Notepad++. I would say it's also more advanced than brackets and uh, visual code. Uh, it's more full-featured. It has more code hinting and stuff built in, so don't do this. But if I was about to write another tag, it would start to pop up to tell me, do you need that tag? Again, don't change anything yet. But it will get give us these pop-ups, and it'll give us code hints, and then error correction and all of that. But don't worry about that yet. One thing, though, is look at this, this, uh, this little line right here. What do you think that means? I made a change, and I haven't saved it. So control S, or just click the Save button up there, it becomes green. So this is going to keep track of all of the changes you've made in the app, as long as the file is open. So if I'm making changes to other lines of the, of the document, those will, be, those will be noted. And when I'm making any changes, of course, I'm going to get the little star up here that tells me, you haven't saved yet. So I made a change here. It says, ready to rock. I want to see the result. We don't have like Notepad++ anymore. We don't have run, run in the browser anymore. We have the button to simulate, which is also up on the debug menu, start debugging. Keyboard shortcut F5. So usually F5 in, in, in many apps is to refresh the screen. Now F5 is to sort of refresh the app. So we made a little change here. Go ahead then and run it. I'm going to still say run it, even though there's no run button. What I mean is the little play button there, or F5. 
You want to make sure, of course, as usual, you've saved. And then you run it. And then here is the update. Now, this is ready to rock. It has a bunch of feedback over here as well. If you can see Visual Studio and the browser at the same time, hey, there's a JavaScript console. Visual Studio has its own JavaScript console that you can see within the software. I'm just going to pull this over to the side. We don't use that autos panel that much. We won't use it that much. So I'm just going to pull it a little bit more open. And Visual Studio changes a bit, actually. Once you're running a project, it changes. I don't see the folder tree anymore. Well, it's still there. It's just tucked away under Solution Explorer. And instead, the screen changes to pop up things that may be useful in the moment that you're debugging and editing. For example, the JavaScript console. One thing, unfortunately, that I don't like about the Visual Studio JavaScript console is that it does not clean itself between the times that you compile. And there is apparently no timestamp of what, when things happened. This feedback was from the first time I ran it. And this feedback is the second time. This is complaining that it cannot find the fav icon ico file. I'm not going to worry about it because that, that doesn't matter for us at all. But this was the first time I ran it, and the subsequent time it says it again. So that's one of the things I don't like. So I'm going to try to remember and remind you to clean or clear this console in between the times that you run your <clears> app so that it's got the latest JavaScript output. And what has changed also on Visual Studio is that now at the top it says you are currently running in debug mode on an Android. We're running it. We can pause the simulation. We can stop the simulation. We can restart the simulation. So just to see that, I'm going to restart it. It's going to recompile it. Nothing has been changed, but it's going to recompile it just for me to see again that it you know, puts stuff in my console. Um, if you look up here, we've got some tabs, DOM Explorer. So we've got a way to also, again, make quick changes to the project. If I open up, now there's no line numbers on this. But in the DOM Explorer, while I'm still simulating, I can open up the main div here. I can open up the div for device ready. I can open up this other paragraph. There's where I wrote ready to rock. And I can change this ready to go. When I make that change, it then also changes on the simulator. So I can make quick changes while it's simulating. It will show up on the simulator here. The HTML file. There's a tab at the top, Cordova Plugin Simulation. This is a really interesting panel that we'll use later. Uh, here we can further simulate. Right now it's a web browser, but it's behaving like a device. And a device has features such as GPS. So I can feed a location to the web browser so that my app thinks I'm at a certain place. Right now it's in Waterloo, I think Canada. Probably not France. If we zoom out, where are we at? <clears throat> Kitchener. Yep, that's Canada. So we can feed in locations. Nothing will actually happen if we change any of this. But we can say we're, we're 100 meters above Waterloo, or we're 100 meters uh, below Waterloo. Nothing will happen, because we're not actually setting up our app to detect any of that. But we will be able to do this uh, location information. We will be able to feed it someone pressed the pause button on their phone. They, they put it to sleep. We're going to be able to fire the event. We're going to tell our app, someone press pause, so therefore save the database. Someone press the button to restart their phone. That's a resume. OK, then that tells the app, um, wait for it to resume, do something else, reload the database. So even though it really is best to test your projects on a real device, we will be able to get close enough on the simulator here. Let's 
see what else we can further say well let's see what does it look like if we're running on a Nexus 10 tablet uh, with Android 4.2 so there will be some ways to simulate a device I'm going to press stop up here to go back to uh, editing. And what we were looking at when we were simulating, you saw that I changed it ready to go. That was temporary. So whatever's happening when the device is running, when simulating, whatever I change there is not going to change by default, depending where you change it. And again, well, as we play with this, we'll further understand it, because the DOM Explorer is a temporary thing. If I have changed the original index file, not this sort of DOM Explorer simulator thing, this is what would be <coughs> permanent. So change there, change there. I saved the index, I stopped it. Yeah, I'm going to kind of go as an overview at the moment, and then we will go in details with some nice handouts that will really explain it. Now let's say I wanted to change some other aspects of this. Uh, I want to put my picture here instead. I'm going to stop the simulation if it's currently running. I'm looking at the index file. I don't see anywhere that, that points to a graphic. 10 points for the first person that finds, where's that graphic? <clears throat> I think I heard two people say the images folder. You both get 10 points. You both get 10 victor points. 1,000 equals one real point. In the images folder, there is a file there. Cordova.j.ping. And if you hover your mouse over it, it gives you a preview. Well, that's where the graphic is. But where in the code do you edit it to change the graphic? What's that? Somewhere exactly where? The first what? In the CSS? In the CSS file, yes, in the CSS file, index.css. Let's open up from the CSS folder, index.css. So this CSS <coughs> file has 98 lines of code to style things. What line number? 34. 34, 35. There we go, line 35 in the CSS file. Background URL dot dot slash images folder Cordova ping file center it. So if I had another graphic here, I would then easily be able to change it. Uh, so don't change this, but this is where I would start to change it. And again, if I am using um, if I'm using this editor. Now it's also going to allow me to do things such as this. It's going to pop up to say, what file do you mean? If we're using other code editors, it might not be as full featured. All right, I mean inside of this folder, inside of this folder, I'm going to find that file. So this code editor, as I said, it's going to be more powerful than Notepad++. I think it also has a lot more features than brackets. It's going to have a lot more code hinting. It's going to be very smart. It's going to give you underlines about this code seems wrong. It's going to give you little pop-ups on the left side that says, here's a little help. Your code seems wrong. Clippy's going to jump out and says, you seem to be wanting to write JavaScript. Let me help you. Well, not really. But it's going to give you some advice on, on writing your code properly. So this is some job, uh, this is some CSS. Well, we haven't really done anything in CSS yet. We're going to do more CSS as time goes on. But if you just kind of want to play with this a little bit, uh, maybe something like over here. Um, I want to change the size of the text when it showed here um, Apache Cordova. I want to change the size of that. I don't think it's big enough as I look through my CSS file, 
h1. Because in the HTML file, I see Apache Cordova has an h1 tag. And in my CSS file, I find h1. There's a font size right there. Let's make it a little bigger. I need to save. There's been a change here. So you can save that. F5 to refresh it, to rerun it on the device. And then now it's a little bigger. Hmm, I'm trying to scroll down. In my case, my screen might be different than yours. Yours may appear all on one screen, that's fine. Mine doesn't, and this is normal, and I can't scroll, and there's no scroll bars, and that's normal, because again, this is trying to simulate a, um, a device. And on a device, you don't have scrolls, you have a finger movement. And it's going to be able to let us click and drag, not just yet, uh, but it's going to be able to let us click, drag, pinch, zoom, all of that. Okay, so there's we're going to work with some CSS. There's some animation happening here. Blinking. Back on the index file. At the end of the index, there's three lines of, C of JavaScript here. Three script tags referencing some CSS files. At the bottom here first, I see scripts, index.js. <clears throat> I see a folder called scripts inside of scripts and index.js. It also says there's some JavaScript file called platform overrides inside of scripts. I'll get back to that later. And then Cordova.js. The weird thing is, I don't see a Cordova.js in my folder tree. That's normal. This is saying, let's use Cordova.js library, but I don't see it anywhere. I don't see it in the index level of the project. I don't see it in scripts. That file basically creates itself at the moment of compiling. When we click that simulate, or eventually when we create this for release, it creates that, that Cordova.js file. And Cordova.js is basically the magic that converts our HTML, CSS, and JavaScript into the correct language per platform. As I said on day one of the class last month, you needed to know Java to traditionally create an Android app. You needed to learn Objective-C to create an iPhone app, nowadays Swift. You needed to know C-sharp to create a Windows app. You needed a whole complete different language for every platform. And you then needed to reprogram your app for every platform. I, I mastered Objective-C, and I've got a great iPhone app, but now I also want to tap into Android devices, so now I've got to learn Java, which is completely different than JavaScript. So I'd have to learn a whole new language. In this class, with Cordova, it basically will convert our web languages into the right language. Automatically, when we do this, run the project. It'll convert it, basically. Short answer. And it's normal that we don't see the file in the folder tree. Don't worry about it. It'll create itself every time we uh, deploy it. Let's, however, open up that index.js file and take a quick look at it. Now, one little thing here. Uh, this is completely just a personal thing. Um, do you guys have this icon up here on this row of icons? There's a little home button, and at the very end, there's a little icon here. It kind of looks like Mario's hat from the original Nintendo Mario, maybe. Uh, does everyone have that little icon there? Uh, raise your hand if you have it clicked on like me. It looks, see, clicked off looks like that, and clicked on looks like that. So who, who has it automatically clicked on? A few people, or most everyone. That icon, I don't like that. What that does is that's the preview selected item, meaning if you click one time, it will open up the file, sort of. See how it opened up on the right side instead of the left side? It's sort of previewing <clears throat> it. Uh, it's not the same as double-clicking it, which actually opens it. I don't like that, and the reason that happens is because Mario's hat is on. 
if you turn it off, then if you click on a file, it doesn't open. Sometimes you just want to click on a file to check its properties, but because that little icon is on, it will also open it. And I think that's annoying. Some people think it's very helpful because I want to click it, I want to edit the file. I personally want to double click it to make sure I'm opening the file. So I'm going to recommend to turn that off. It's not actually Mario's hat, it's like a little tab that appears at the top. But anyway, uh, double click index.js to edit it. Here's some JavaScript. Some of it looks familiar, some of it is brand new. What is familiar is the immediately invoked function. Remember, in our JavaScript, we have this function that opens up and then closes at the very end, exactly as we've done before. We've got the use strict declaration to give us more feedback as we debug. But then we've got these other things. This sort of looks familiar, add event listener. Another cool thing, as you hover over a lot of this code, it'll pop up to give you some hints about what it is and how to use it. Um, things that we define ourselves will sort of also give you, well, this is a function that you invented, you, us. What is var? If you hover over that, it pops up. Um, var is a local variable, blah, blah, whatever. So anyway, add event listener. This is waiting for something. Previously, we had an add event listener uh, for uh, basic JavaScript to submit a button or click on a button and here we've got something called device ready there's gonna be some communication behind the scenes that happens between the device hardware itself and your app our app is going to wait when does the physical device tell my app we're ready so there's some line right here right away let's wait for the device to tell our app it's ready once it's ready comma run a function called on device ready which is right here and notice just like notepad plus plus you can double click to select and it'll highlight instances of that code throughout your app throughout your code so there's a function that runs on device ready there's some other stuff here I'll get back to it some variables are created document element by ID this is currently not using jQuery which we will use jQuery but it's currently not using jQuery so it's using the old verbose, you know, lengthy and wordy versions of classic JavaScript, add, add event listener. And it's using the document.getElementById instead of the plain old dollar selector. Once we add jQuery to this, then we'll continue to use the, the jQuery selector. But we're saying, let's get an ID called device ready from the HTML. If I'm looking at the HTML, it is right here. There's, an I, there's a div with an ID of device ready. So we make a JavaScript object of it. We're uh, going to then select some other um, uh, elements, in this case, listening and received. What kinds of elements are these based on the prefix? Classes, yes, with the dot. Remember, dots are classes, pound signs are IDs. And then we're saying um, display the received element. Well, that's what causes then for it to detect devices ready. You may notice it for a moment that it's gray as it, let's see if I can get it to show again. See, it's so fast, but there's, it's gray for a moment. And it's showing the connecting to device. It's showing that for a moment, but then all the stuff loads into memory. It says ready to go. Well, that's happening because of this JavaScript here. Once it detects that the device is ready, it does some stuff. And one thing is it hides the message that it says, please wait. And then it displays the message ready to rock ready to go. So there's some basic stuff in this project right out of the box. There's some basic stuff. The um, skeleton, the shell of this, we're going to use it and we're going to eventually 
import what we've done so far before, the CBDB project. We're going to import it. The very short answer is any web project that I put into the WW folder will become this app. There's a, like three or four loose ends, however, that we have to tie up for it to fully work, which we'll cover, of course. But basically, you can put in a fully formed web project with an index file and CSS and JavaScript and images into this folder, and it's an app. Those loose ends are very important to tie up, which we will, and we'll, we'll cover that. But uh, this is the big idea here. We're going to start using Visual Studio to then upgrade, to import a web project to run on real devices. Um, we, uh, I want to start using real devices. So let me do a little demonstration of it first, then I'll give you a device. But I've got already here, I've got a whole class set of these Asus ZenPad 10s. The school just got them, paid a few thousands of dollars for it, so don't drop them, please. And uh, they're USB powered, and you know, you plug them in. I'll give you one in a moment. I'm going to ask that I trade your ID for for the device while you're in class. I can't um, check these out for you to take home, unfortunately. You have to use them during class, and I need to take your ID while we're in class. Student ID, driver's license, or all major credit cards accepted. So that's going to plug in. Again, you'll be able to do this in a moment. It's going to say, are you sure you want to transfer data? I will say yes. So then this should be here. Whoops, it should say here. Let me just confirm this. It should say that we are going to be able to connect and deploy. Sometimes you just have to wait for it to find your device. There's going to be then um, I did it a little too fast, but up here there was a. We were, it's showing deploy to a simulator or deploy to a device. So once I give you the device, and once I show you how to show how to set up your device, if you'd like, we'll be able to switch to device, and then I run it. And again, this will then take a little while to fully compile again because now it's going to compile and deploy to a real device. It's going to translate our code completely for real into an actual. Java behind the scenes app. So again, this is one of the things that I'll have in my handout that you need to do every time you come in before I start the lecture. Because it's going to connect over to online resources, download stuff, compile it, and then deploy. Subsequent times that I compile, it will be faster. So it's just going to think about that for a moment. And then it's going to deploy to the device. Sometimes what happens is the best thing is that you want the, you want the device plugged in first before starting Visual Studio. Now, I've taught this class for at least five years. And I've seen the problems. I've seen it working perfectly for people the first time. I've seen it take a couple of times doing the exact same thing two times, and then the third time it works. I don't know why. Sometimes it works right away, and sometimes it takes a couple of tries, and then it works. I don't know. Maybe we spook the gremlins away the second time. But sometimes it just works right away. Like right now, it didn't work for me right away, but I expected it. Sometimes that happens. So I'm just going to restart. I'm going to unplug it, replug it, start Visual Studio again, go back to my project. This is already here popping up to give me some tips. Unnecessary semicolon. So it's going to give me even more feedback as I write my CSS, JavaScript, and HTML in my error list. But we'll look at that later. Let me see if the second time it behaves. Yeah. 
as our projects get larger, it is very common for deployment times to get longer, of course, because there's many more pieces that our project is made out of. Our project so far has been like a two megabyte large file. As we bring it into Visual Studio and start to add the Android platform, the iOS platform, the camera plugin feature, the vibration plugin feature, as we start to add more stuff, it'll get bigger and bigger. And usually by the very end of the course, our app project file goes up to about 110 megabytes. When we deploy it to a real device, however, it does compress it down to like 2 megabytes, like a very reasonable size. But as we work in our project file, it, I have seen it get up to like 110, 20 megabytes. So make sure you've got the space on your flash drive. And we're not going to get into using like gigabytes of space. But uh, usually what I'm doing, I'm making copies of my code so it, it does add up. Okay, well, this is a little slow here. So here's what we'll do. Um, I'm going to pause the recording for the moment and let's pass out some tablets here so you can try this out.